Hi everyone, my name is Bobby Berenson W. I have been in the independent art profession for about 20 years. I have been running my own business called Metallic Vision since 2007 where I sell my art and my jewelry creations and all sorts of little curios. Now I have had a lot of experience with both protecting my work online and helping others do the same. So I hope this presentation will give you some good ideas and some much needed information. Now, I'm not an expert at copyright law, but thankfully you don't need to be to protect your work. This is the cover of a little book from Nella Donato. She's an artist, designer, and writer from Croatia. I don't know if this one, this particular book is still available, but the picture was perfect at describing this whole topic. So, your art is going to get taken, mostly for things that are harmless. I mean, who here isn't okay with someone who loves your work and downloads some of it to use as their computer background? The fact that they want to look at it that much is pretty flattering. The same thing with blogs and YouTube and social media. Please, please show my work, repost it, find more fans for me. I want to share smiles and a moment of joy with everyone doing what I love to do. Use it as your RP character. As a longtime pen and paper role player, I love this idea. Small publications and flyers that have a limited release and are not for profit? Cool. All I ask as a creator is that you credit me. Why? So others can find me. And here we have the first of many examples that are going to come in this presentation. They are all from this very informative and very interesting article from Board Panda called 84 Times Artists Caught Companies and Fake Artists Copying Their Work and Selling It as Their Own. Yeah, it's a, a long title and a bit of a mouthful, but it's pretty easy to find. So here we have a cool moth by photographer Kevin Collins. It's the one on the top. And it was, a photo, it was photoshopped and submitted to a contest by a guy in France. That's the one on the bottom. You can see he made the spots into a checkerboard pattern, but only on the head. You can see where it ends, and he just cropped it close in. So the fraudulent photo won a new MacBook Pro in a, for a contest. Collins comments on the subject, quote, When I release photos on Creative Commons license, I have the intent of helping out students, scientists, and nonprofits. I've never had the intent of helping a thief and rule breaker win a MacBook Pro from a company that has turned a blind eye to copyleft violations. So don't be afraid, be prepared. Theft is rampant. Unfair use is a problem. It's just a fact. It's going to happen. Keep in mind that the internet is also full of wonderful people who want to see and share your art. So we want to make it hard for thieves to steal, but easy for your awesome fans to share and for new fans to find. I hope this humble little presentation can help you protect yourself to begin with so you don't get taken advantage of, and you can get more fans to find your art. Your art will be spread around the internet, but it can be a lot of effortless advertising when it is done right. So how do we do it right? Well, I have prepared four B's that'll help you remember and be able to do this. First, you need to be aware that it is a problem that you will face and know how it can happen. Second, be prepared with your security solutions and precautions. Third, be watching for breaches and thefts. And fourth, be ready for action in response to different levels of theft. So what about fan art protection? Well, I'm going to start this conversation with a nested quote. It's from Corinne Ward from Art Theft on the Internet. Artwork is stolen online in many different ways, but some artists, particularly of the younger generation, feel as though it is not as important if your original work is taken as long as nobody is profiting from it. And there's our nested quote there. Many young artists in the new age of technology do not appear to understand how original art is to be treated, seeing it more or less the same as fan work. Now we have been inundated with art and content on the internet. It is so easy to grab things and so often much harder to identify their sources. This makes theft not only easy, but so easily rationalized and excused away. This cute little Deadpool here is one of the few pictures in this presentation that I could not find a creator name for. And the pile of Deadpool art to look through was massive. I gave up after 10 pages of it. Tributes, homages to other artists, character crossovers, shipping, and all other fan arts 
are still new enough that they don't have very many hard rules. You may notice that uh, there's a lot of my own art in this presentation. That's mostly because, well, I have complete control over it, so I don't have a problem using it. So when it comes to big companies like Nintendo and others, they watch your print-on-demand sites like Redbubble and Design by Humans. They will make you take things down. These POD sources are getting more and more strict about fan arts. I say be careful and keep up to date on what you can do and can't do and play nicely. I ran into this problem with the Pokemon picture on the right, but the one on the left was less trouble since the games are all titled differently as spoofs of the real things. Parody does fall under fair use usually, and most small uses are overlooked. After all, the owners of the IP need to be sure going after a person is worth the expense, but they all have lawyers that can send all sorts of letters and even nasty grams to you, so it's best to try to avoid the stress. You may notice that uh, there's a lot of my own art in this presentation. That's mostly because, well, I have complete control over it, so I don't have a problem using it. So when it comes to big companies like Nintendo and others, they watch your print-on-demand sites like Redbubble and Design by Humans. They will make you take things down. These POD sources are getting more and more strict about fan arts. I say be careful and keep up to date on what you can do and can't do and play nicely. I ran into this problem with the Pokemon picture on the right, but the one on the left was less trouble since the games are all titled differently as spoofs of the real things. Parody does fall under fair use usually, and most small uses are overlooked. After all, the owners of the IP need to be sure going after a person is worth the expense. But they all have lawyers that can send all sorts of letters and even nasty grams to you, so it's best to try to avoid the stress. So now let's start with our first B. Be aware. This here is a perfect example of copying and altering someone else's work, which is our first point there. A woman in Peru stole from a lot of artists and simply filled spaces in with flowers. The original creator of this beautiful image here of the woman holding a cat, Ryan Connors, says she just, and I quote, vomited flowers all over them and sold them as her own. My sister had an image just snagged from Deviant Art and put on a clock by a fly-by-night pop-up POD site from China. It even still had the DA watermark still clearly on it. That happens more often than you'd think, and it's kind of sad. A lot of young artists will also copy or trace your work, and that's good for them trying to learn. It's bad for them claiming it is their own. People who recognize the art can be very mean when they think you are stealing another's work. Avoid the stress and credit, credit, credit. We will talk a little more about that later. In my opinion, art stolen by corporations is the worst, and the art that is purchased, scanned, sometimes altered, and sold at small local events is the second worst. There is a small chance of you ever finding out about the latter, and someone can walk off with not only money from you but credit as well, and sometimes a lot of it. I watched helplessly recently as someone did this at a very big local Utah con at the booth next to mine. The vague and never mentioned artist had images that were recognize, recognizable advertisement photos and at least one other artist picture who was at the con. All he did to them was badly paint over them, adding popular fandom themes. He had Disney characters, Marvel characters, DC characters, etc. And he made bank. And the con did nothing since they already got his booth fee and didn't care. They had business cards, like 50 of them, that were home printed and had no real info on them. Just a P.O. box and some company-ish name, not even a name for the artist. They also made sure to dodge anybody and coming through at the end or beginning of the day. They left early and came late. Then there are the bots that search social media sites for the keywords, I want this on a t-shirt, or a poster, or a phone case, etc., and pop up on a print-on-demand site for as long as they can maintain it. The instance I have little sympathy for, and I mean very little, are the tired, overworked, and chronically underpaid paid wet shop graphic designers. This is where the biggest trouble comes. Your art is stolen by one of these guys and sent up to the advertisers who often don't know or care who made the art. 
then it's approved by the guys higher up who care even less and are only concerned with making the money on the product that they are selling. We'll have several examples of this later. Oof. Wow, my bias is showing a little here. Got a bit ranty. <laughs> well, let's move on. So let me tell you a little bit about my recent experience. This just happened this year. This was one of my best pieces of art. I, I love this piece. This is Eslin the Industrial Witch. And I made her several years ago, back in 2016. So this was loved enough by an Instagram fan that they added the text that you see here on the right and posted it. They themselves had no desire to profit on it, but they added the text and did not credit the art. Several people who knew and also liked the image tagged me and I was able to post my name and most importantly a thank you to the OP for the fun combo. The trouble arose when the commenters started saying that they wanted it on a poster, so some previously unknown print-on-demand site specializing in posters popped up with mine and many others' artworks on it. This is a common problem now. Bots find art that has had I want this comments on it, and suddenly they are on these sites, usually in t-shirt form. That's the most common. It is very hard, it is very hard to find. Luckily, I was alerted by another friend on Facebook. So I'm going to break down the problems and how I handled this situation. My problems with this. The thing that concerns me was the fact that there was no watermark and it was a very clear image, meaning, I'm assuming, that it was a scanned print or something, skirting all my precautions. There were few changes made. The only changes to the art, they were pretty mild, just a little cropping, a filter, and text. Not even original text. You can look this up and find this phrase on a lot of things. So my solution. First, I sent a letter to the site that had it up and I also filled out their form for claiming artwork be taken down. They were pretty prompt and didn't give me any trouble. Also, my sister sent the same form as my agent, aka my theft protection agent. Second, I posted about it with a link to the product on my social sites. Here's the post I made. Hi everyone, I need some help. A nice, well-meaning person, or a thief, not sure, made this mod of one of my pictures, as Lynn the Industrial Witch. It's funny and I am working on a version I can put up on my shop, but some t-shirt POD place has it and that isn't cool. This is the only pick of mine ever to find an audience of more than a few people. Help me find and save her from theft. I am not good at finding these things. Love you all and good karma. You can't control how your friends will react, and some may send nasty grams, but when you talk to them, do not encourage anyone to do so. It's just not professional. And thirdly, I made my own version to be sold in my official print-on-demand shops and posted in my socials. At most, I will sell some. At least, they will have competition. Also, if you're working with fonts, just a note here, make sure that, that the ones that you use are free for commercial use, or buy the right to use it. One of my favorite fonts, I easily bought a license from the creator, and I keep the documentation in some of my business folders. Now we move on to be prepared. So how do you prepare? Well, you need to be proactive in your advertising and protection. Identify your pictures. I can't stress this enough. Things get shared, and few take the time to label each share that they make themselves. Uh, I'm looking at you, Pinteresters. Do it for them. Also, it is much better for your advertising. Use watermarks. Make a cool one. This here is mine with the signature I've been using for 20 plus years. When you post your pictures online, make sure to use a low resolution file. Printed images are often between 150 and 350 as or up um, as far as DPI resolution. All you need for it to look great on a monitor or phone screen is 75 DPI and if anyone prints it, it won't look very good. Some sharing sites block right clicking on images. This I am conflicted about because I'm okay with personal enjoyment on electronic screens. This is also easily circumventable through JavaScript blockers and print screens. If it shows up on the screen, it can be used. Clearly identify your pictures with your name. The best combo is the picture's title, copyright symbol, and date, and your full artist name. You can also add your web alias or your website address if you want. 
Lastly, use caution when posting in social media. This is where the theft starts. When you make your post, ask people to use a code phrase instead of saying, I want this on a t-shirt or I want this on a poster. Make sure that you state the use that it's okay for. Saying in your post that a Creative Commons license is great and that's what it's under and these are the uses I accept. I'm pretty bad at doing that one. Make sure your progress photos and Instagram shots are either blocked partially by something or are close-up pictures or have lighting that will deter stealing them from there. All three of those if you can. Without clear identification, you risk your art and lose a lot of simple advertising. So here we're going to run over how attribution works. This little picture is a good guideline for how to attribute to a source. A lot of the options can easily be covered by you as the artist. Add your name and title at the bottom. Ironically, I couldn't find an attribution for this little black chalkboardy picture or the other one on the next page. Another thing I like to do whenever I see someone repost my work on any site, but especially on Pinterest, is to comment on the share and say thanks. And give any other info I want to be included, like a link to the piece on my website. It is a positive interaction that is uplifting to everyone. A big note here. Use the copyright symbol. It lets people know right away that you are serious and will not roll over when pushed. It also shows that you value your art greatly. Attribution includes the most important things about a picture. What it is, who made it and when, why we should care, how you found it, and where we can find more things like it. The most important ones for you, the ones that you need to provide, are the title, your name, copyright and year, and where people can find more things like this. Whether you do that in a post or on the actual image is fine, but you definitely at least want your copyright and the date and your name on every picture. Here we have an example of amazing crediting from a blog. They've got the name, they've got the size and the even the, the medium. They've got the date and the, the artist's name very clear to see. Um, in the blog text, it also included a link to the artist's website. So make sure your name is trackable on the art. And so credit in a nutshell is to make it easy for anyone who sees it to track you and your work down. When you post an image, clearly state the uses you allow in your post description, some were visible on your website, etc. If you use Creative Commons a lot, you need to understand the levels. It was made for creatives to share and build on each other's work, like using a brush or texture made by someone else in your digital art, or using music for your videos on YouTube, etc. Here is a very clear and concise definition from Wikipedia. Quote, One of several public copyright licenses that enable the free distribution of an otherwise copyrighted work a CC license is used when an author wants to give other people the right to share, use, and build upon a work that he or she, the author, has created. CC provides an author flexibility, for example, he or she might choose to allow non-commercial uses of a given work only, and protects the people who use or redistribute an author's work from concerns of copyright infringement as long as they abide by the conditions that are specified in the license by which the author distributes the work. We will not go into depth too much here as copyright or Creative Commons licenses are a full presentation on its own. Many art sharing sites such as DeviantArt have some Creative Commons attributions built in that you can tag on your posts. You know this image. It was made by Shepard Fairley and was famously used by Obama's campaign. You see here the problem with it. It was taken from someone else. The photo it was taken from was by Manny Garcia of the Associated Press. The consequences of theft can be very serious and ruin a career, as we see in this section. Be careful. And I have some more nested quotes from the article Barack Obama's Hope Poster on Wikipedia. In January 2009, after Obama had won the election, 
Fairley's mixed-media stenciled portrait version of the image was acquired by the Smithsonian Institution for its National Portrait Gallery. Later in January 2009, the photographer on which Fairley based the poster was revealed. An April 2006 shot by former Associated Press freelance photographer Manny Garcia. In response to claims by the Associated Press for compensation, Fairley sued for a declaratory judgment that his poster was a fair use of the original photography. The party settled out of court in January 2011, with details of the settlement remaining confidential. On February 29, in 2012, Fairley pled guilty in a New York federal court to destroying and fabricating documents during his legal battle with the Associated Press. Fairley had sued the news service in 2008 after it claimed that the famous poster was based on one of its photos. Fairley claimed that he used a different photograph for the poster, but he admitted that, in fact, he was wrong and tried to hide the error by destroying documents and manufacturing others, which is the source of the one count of criminal contempt to which he pled guilty. In September, Fairley was sentenced to two years of probation, 300 hours of community service, and a fine of $25,000. Theft just isn't worth it. In this day and age, people will find out. The internet is really good at finding those things out. Be watching. Here we're going to run down a lot of examples. Unfortunately, the theft that damages most artists and happens far more than it should is done by companies. Here we find the lazy, the too tired, the overworked graphic, graphic slave spectrum of theft. We have a unique embroidery work by David Foetus. I'm going to mess up most of these names. I am so sorry. I have their names all written so you can see them. <laughs> so please forgive my bad, my bad pronunciations. So it was stolen by the fashion label Brandy Melville and a painting by Dexter Weeks here stolen and put on P POD shirts. And there's Lauren Nassif's, Nassif's lovely simple line drawing stole by Samantha Beston and used as pattern on fabric. Even Disney has been caught doing this. They argue often that since the IP was theirs and you drew their IP, they can use it. There has been a lot of stink over it. If you do fan art, you should be up to date on such things to protect yourself. We will see another example of that later. Here's one of the more, well, innocent thefts. A lot of smaller artists who buy CNC machines will grab anything that they can to use. And that's, that's beautiful that they want to be so creative. And I'm sure that this CNC machine artist was well-meaning in the theft of text artist Bellen, Bellencall's work, but it's just not okay. A lot of people are happy to do art for you, specifically work with you if you have a CNC company to make their art and put their art on wood and other su surfaces. I have someone I want to work with doing that. It's a great thing. And then there's that time that Ford stole art from the game Firewatch by Campo Santo Studios. Game Informer got wind of this, and boy, did it blow up. So how do I find out if I was robbed? Well, there are several ways. Friends and family are your best asset here. They will recognize your work, and they get pretty angry if they see someone else robbing you. Oh, by the way, thanks to Ilsa on Facebook for letting me know about the poster theft. Love ya! I love a good reverse image search. They are very interesting and will let you know where your art may be that it shouldn't, as well as how well you are doing at spreading the joy. As we have learned, some of the most damaging art thefts are done by companies, so keep an eye on the companies that use art in similar styles to your own. This can benefit you not only by preventing theft, but also by being aware of a possible call to the public for art, or you may even be able to submit art for them to use legally. Those can be sweet deals. But be humble and considerate. The U.S. system of capitalism is toxic for many workers, and sometimes there is less malice than exhausted desperation or indifference in corporation theft. We have a quote here from Susan Day from Felt Magnet. Quote, Often these companies employ graphic designers or artists who aren't receiving enough pay or time to deliver original designs. Hence, they hop on the web for inspiration and, quote-unquote, borrow, in other words, steal, ideas for artwork. 
Frequently, the original artist will be angry at the graphic designers of these companies, but sometimes it's not entirely their fault. They are rushed, stressed, inspired by your designs, and trying their best to please all parties in five minutes. Close quote. I know it hurts, but handling the situation with class and patience can only benefit you as a person and as an artist. Be ready for action. Any artist should know all the rights they have to their work, and different countries have different rules. It is also good in this global economy to know what you can do if the theft is in another country. We're going to touch on that a little more later. Call on your friends and family on social media to increase awareness if needed, consult a lawyer for a cease and desist letter or a more intense legal action. When the theft is corporate, sometimes it pays to contact media organizations. It is hard to bring a big company to task if you don't make them look bad. And beat them with your own product. Make it better quality, better design, color, printing. Customize it somehow with your official artisticness. People are not just buying your art, they are buying you. So be awesome and vigilant encourage an amicable solution if possible, it will only win you friends in the end. If you want more security, you can copyright your images within three months of making for a small fee with the government, though it doesn't necessarily do much more than using the copyright symbol correctly. As mentioned before, here is the Disney Company's stolen artwork from Katie Woodgear. Disney Corporation has a past of taking artists' work and reproducing it on other products. I'm going to read Katie Woodgear's response on her social media to finding out Disney stole her artwork. Quote, I don't know what to do. I am so upset. Can anyone help me? My painting was created back in 2010, and since then so many people have expressed their love for it, not just on Tumblr, but in many places. At least nine people had it tattooed on their bodies. It's one of my favorite images I created at university, and I was proud of it in many ways. Disney has used it on a cosmetic bag, and they have produced a t-shirt with a really similar design, clearly modeled from my painting. I am so mad because I have no chance at getting Disney to do anything about it. I had so much respect for the company, and now I am just so upset and disappointed. Any help, advice, or signal boosting would be amazing, and thank you so much for the kind person who messaged me about this." Close quote. So when is it time to get a lawyer? If things are bad enough, you may need to get a lawyer. Use a real lawyer. Don't make up fake letterhead. It costs money, but it is better and it is worth it to protect you and your art. Also, if you are an artist, any expenses occurred in dealing with stolen artwork may be potential tax deductions. Check with an accountant for full details on that. Regardless, you will want to keep a good record of all expenses and interactions. You want a good paper trail should you have to go into a further legal battle. Balance your pros and cons. Is the fight worth the missed profit, the stress, or the possible media backlash? Many times, a cease and desist letter from an official lawyer is plenty at this point, and they are much quieter. Some things you just want, sometimes you just want the theft to stop, and don't want a big fuss. Letters are good. A cease and desist letter can also just be from you. It is a good step before going to a lawyer. Search the web and you will find lots of resources and help for all kinds of letters and for all kinds of theft and media. I'll have more groups at the end of this that you can reference for that. But what if it's an overseas company or person who steals my work? Sadly, there is little you can do to legally get them to stop using it. There are a ton of Chinese companies, quote unquote companies, and even individuals who rampantly steal images from artists on the internet. When artist Queenie, still don't know how I say that one, sorry, who very sadly passed away last year, had art stolen, she wrote on her socials, quote, got my crap stolen and printed on phone cases, tried to talk to their Facebook and they deleted my comment. Well, this is a bit frustrating. What are the chances this Chinese company would remove their product with my art on it even after I filed a DMCA report? Close quote. And here's more art from DA artist M. Spice of Warframe's Lotus Prime, swiped in China. Love the comment by Scops here. W quote, wouldn't be a complete Chinese version without some stolen artwork. Close quote. It's time to release the fans. 
So how do you combat such theft when it's from overseas? Well, when you see it, talk. Encourage your fans to help you expose the theft. Once it is seen enough, the stolen image will be pulled, or in some cases, companies will try to buy or bribe themselves out of the bad image. And that can just be a win for you, even if only a moral victory. This is using two things against your thief, love and anger. Your family and fan friends don't just love your art, they love you. And theft brings out the righteous anger in all of them. They want to defend you. In some of these cases, there is little else you can do but battle in the public arena. Also, look for your artist friends. A lot of them have had experience with this too, and they'll help you as well. Let's look at these examples of calling on friends. Also from Board Pandas, let's see if we can do this. 84 times artists caught companies and fake artists copying their work and s selling it as their own. Oh, almost. Here we have a bunch of cool Overwatch art by Ella Puse. I, once again, I'm not sure how to say these. I hope I don't butcher them too badly. This has been stolen wholesale by apparel for gamers and being sold totally fraudulently. The user kept blocking their comments, so they posted to their fans. And fans like to help their artist friends. I do hope this got resolved. It was hard to find out any more information about it online. Then there is Carlos Ruiz and his I am not throwing away my shot Hamilton musical art fan art that was stolen by T-Chip. The Joker here is a very popular fan art subject. Here is Chris Oz Fulton's work that was being stolen from Deviant Art and sold on prints. His response, response was a bit harsh for me, but it was totally understandable. He also made it public to combat the theft. Sometimes people will argue that, quote, if I did the work, it is mine, unquote. You hear this argument a lot from people copying your art. Sorry, kids, it's not how it works. Here are some guidelines. It cannot be an obvious imitation. You cannot only change the text or make it grayscale or change other colors. You cannot reshoot a near exact image. That's just not okay. And if it can't be differentiated from the original, it is an infringement. In our examples here, we have this cute rainbow phone case by Ilsa Valfrey that was perfectly copied by Forever 21. Different designs of hers were also stolen by Rue 21. She's had a lot of these problems. Here's an album cover from rapper Sadat X that was stolen from the artist Jay Roder. I love his, his picture here, set the world on fire indeed. And here is Ed McGowan, a San Francisco photographer who has had several instances of theft, one by a well-known terrorist organization. This is an example from a German creative agency that copied his photo, My World in Light, to the letter and called it theirs. You see this happen a lot with photography. With the rise of stock photography, a lot of people assume that it is okay to use any photography you find on the internet. Once again, that's not how it works. Another thing you're going to hear is, quote, but I changed the style, unquote, or medium or colors, and the, it's okay because X percent is different. Here's a comic book style piece by J. Scott Campbell that was copied in a Van Gogh style and called original by the thief. And we have artist Zu, X, Zu, I, I'm not even going to try to say that, X-U-H, from Poland, whose beautiful and deceptively simple rose and knife design was stolen for bear trap music by musician Black Bear and used as his music logo. People even unknowingly got tattoos of it. Great memorial of your favorite musician's theft. Zhu, Zhu, X stated, quote, Black Bear, Bear Track, whatever, doesn't have my permission to use my drawing. I didn't even know about it until I got messages from people. My emails are being ignored. Classic. The sad part is, huge amount of people start to associate my drawing with Black Bear and his buddies from Twitter. They use it as their logo or something. I don't even know. I'm tired. Disclaimer. F this drawing. I'm officially cursing everyone who stole it and will steal it in the future. Close quote. She says it very well, and it hurts so much to offer your piece of joy and brightness to the world, only to have it stolen and used by liars, unscrupulous entities, and the ignorant masses. As an artist myself, I have spent 30 years working on my art, six of which were spent paying professionals to teach me and share their love of art. When you buy art from an original creator, you are doing three things— 
showing support and love, using your hard-earned money to say to them that all their time and effort was worth it and that you want to see more from them. Here's a list of where you can get more help. The Society of Illustrators, Association of Illustrators, American Society of Architectural Illustrators, the Society of Children's Book Writers and Illustrators, and GT, or GYST Inc. Um, they have copyright pros and lawyer consultants. Most of these groups have lots of documents, letters, contracts, insurance articles, and such that can be helpful and educational. Some are free and some have a membership fee or other small cost. There are a lot of professional organizations out there who champion creative rights and are run by the artists and illustrators. Always remember there are a lot of people you can reach out to for help. You are not alone. Well, congrats! You've been robbed! Keep your head up and don't get discouraged. That means you made the big time, right? I will share a little of my philosophy here. I have been putting out art for 20 years, and until this last year, I had no real thefts. Then my favorite work, and also I think my best work, as we've talked about, Eslin the Industrial Witch, got a moderate amount of attention in the steampunk and pagan communities. So finding out that some sweet fan added text and posted it to much fanfare really excited me. And even though I was not credited by them in the original post, I was able to post in the comments, which was not as good, but it is a start. Then it got stolen. My reaction was, at first I was hurt, and then I was flooded with glee. Something I made was seen and loved by enough people that it got enough ten attention to get stolen. I make art for two reasons. I love doing it, and it has been the best treatment for my mental and physical illnesses. It is a way I can bring some small bit of joy or comfort to the people around me. I know that it is a motivation for a lot of artists. And as far as those who steal with malice, we have to educate the populace enough to make such thieving stop. We are the artists losing income and the fans who are being swindled. Remember, people make mistakes, and sometimes there is no malice in inadvertent theft, just someone who loves your work and wants to contribute. It is up to us to kindly speak to them about fair use. Thanks for your time and attention. Keep making the world a better place with your art. See ya! Thanks guys for watching. That was the presentation, How Can You Protect Your Art on the Web by Bobby Berenson W. She's here with us now for some live questions. The first question comes in from Amanda G. She has two. The first one is, you mentioned IP being stolen by companies as big as Disney. If that happens with my art, what can a nobody like me do about it? That's the that's the uh, the difficult thing. Being such a big company, um, one of the things that you can do is, like I said, uh, bring out the um, the public because that's your that's your best option and when you educate the public that hey this isn't disney's work this is my work you have a higher chance um the other thing when it comes to these big companies that's the time really to to think about investing in a lawyer um because there can be turning to like the selfish side there can be a big payout for for some of that sometimes so you get um lawyers who are a lot more interested and it might even uh work with you to get a cut at the end of what is made instead of charging you by the hour. It depends, of course, on the lawyer. The second question from Amanda is, if someone from Etsy takes my art, how can I handle that with patience and class, like you mentioned? <gasps> oh, that is, that gets a little harder, um, mostly because we're dealing with individuals. And, uh, one of the one of the things this is one of the reasons you have you get your friends and family um, there have been a lot of artists who sell things on Etsy and get away with it for a really long time because nobody knows them when you find somebody like that a lot of times they've been stealing from other artists and not just so if you can connect with those other artists then you have a bigger pool of people to help you um, Etsy does have a lot of reporting uh, options, so I would definitely look into that first and then try to gather your support. Um, talk to them first. So first, go to Etsy, look at what you can do. Before you do that, send a letter to the person taking your art and say, hey, 
this is not okay. This is not the use I have authorized. Um, you know, I don't want to make this a huge stink that, that ruins both of our days, but this needs to come down. And if I need to take further action, um, I will, but be very civil and very professional because being professional is very important for your career in the future. Um, so if they don't respond positively, you continue with the, I mean, they don't even have to respond positively. If they take the work down, that's the important part. But if they don't and they fight you on it, that's when you take it up to the next level of, of uh, protection there by going to Etsy and filing a complaint. And uh, should that still not work, well, that's when you have to weigh your option of, is this a stink I want to make or not? And if it is, if this person is making, actually making money on your work, that's when you bring out your friends. That's when you look at getting a cease and desist letter. Because if it's an individual, that will just raise the level of seriousness to the, of this to them that a lot of times they will back off. So that's what I would do. Thank you so much for that one. I actually have a question myself. So I've heard recently that there are bots online that harvest art based on the comments that it gets on social media. So like if someone comments, I want this on a t-shirt, they'll steal it to put it on a t-shirt. So how can you work with your followers to prevent that sort of theft? Well, I've, I've heard um, a lot of people will say, hey, if you want this put on... Um, items and they'll say items instead of the the keywords of that are searched for if you want this put on items um tell me that you want it put on flowers or you want it put on a unicorn or something completely random and then they'll know the artist will know what you're talking about but the bots will not be able to find it so if you do that it's kind of a fun little secret code for a lot of the followers but you're going to end up with a lot of people that just see the picture and then post and not actually look at it. So when you go through your comments and you see somebody has t-shirted, that's when you do a search to see if it has been snagged. Um, it's not going to get snagged every time, but that's how I uh, lost a little bit of control on that one picture of mine. And that picture has gone all over the place and I have not been tagged more than once. Um which gets a little frustrating when you have something go around and nobody knows who did it. Uh, but um, it was, a lot of people said they wanted a poster. And so that's how it got, you know, picked up by this, this uh, print on demand poster place. Um, so the code words are really good, but something's going to fall through the cracks. So searching for your image um, especially a lot of the print-on-demand sites put a lot of money into advertising, so they're going to pop up first. But searching it, if you see those keywords of t-shirt and poster, searching for those, even just the name of your picture or a description and poster or reverse image search will help you find those. And my experience is a lot of those companies get away with the anonymity. The, the artist themselves doesn't know that it's being you know, stolen. So if you can go and give them, they all have, well, most of them have a form that you can say, hey, this, you don't have, um, you, you shouldn't be selling this, this is mine. They, they put the form up, you can send in the form. And if you have another person like my sister is my official uh, theft protection agent. So I have actually given her authority to, to fill out those, those forms for me. And so she'll do that sometimes when, when I don't know about it or we do it twice. So my theft agent and me being the artist will fill those out and send those in. And that just doubles the importance of, hey, you don't want to pick this fight. But. Thank you so much. Another question we have is approaching this from the other side. If you find a piece of unsourced art, what is the best way to use reverse image source to find the original poster? That's fun because that's how I was trying to find the uh, the little Deadpool that was so cute with the little teddy bear that he was holding a gun to. But I could not find it. And I bet I go back and search for it now and it might be the first one on the list because it's always fluctuating. 
but, and I knew it was a DA image. I just, I still couldn't find it. Um, but if you can, once again, do the reverse image search, wait a few days, try it again, wait a few days, try it again. But you run into, like, if you want to use it still, I mean, a lot of people are like, yeah, go ahead and share it. Not a problem. But if you want to use it in some of your art, like you're doing a collage or something like that, um, make sure that you have done due diligence to find it. And until you can find out who it's by, try not to do a for-profit thing. So if you're just going to use it in, a, in, a, in something that you're going to just show off for free, you have a lot less trouble and a lot less malicious violation than if you are going to sell it yourself. Now, the artist may find you and contact you and say, hey, that's mine, in which case, send out a post, edit the first one that you did saying, hey, this is the artist. Talk to that artist, say, hey, can I just use it for this? I'm not making any money on it. I, it should, I hope. What are, your, what are your requirements on Creative Commons? And uh, be willing to work with the artist once they find you or you find them. But uh, just just keep searching. Like I said, the, the system is constantly turning things over. Um, and hopefully you'll find it. Uh, if not, there are, there are places you can post and say, hey, do you know who's whose picture this is like there are different chats on da and there are different um your own social media say i love this picture does anybody know who did it but it's Thank a hard you thing again. to figure out there is a lot to search through so we have oh, about yeah. one minute left the last question i've got is from hamster of war who asks is there a good provider that you know of if you want to make your art available for purchase particularly to fans in poorer locations and countries um, one of my favorite, um, I really like the, the red bubbles and the design by humans. And a lot of those print on demand sites have local to different places in different countries, uh, printing. So it's so much more affordable for anybody in those different countries. Um, I don't know for sure if there is a specific, uh, depending on where it is, any specific other little companies, but I'm sure they have different smaller companies that you can find in each each uh, region so looking at the region and looking at places that might qualify might be a good way to find those um, I know that uh, oh what is it it's the Kindle publishing also has regional publishing places so you could put up a an art book for a very nominal fee on on the Kindle publishing and it'll have your own Amazon shop that most people around the world can access. I, I mean, it is Amazon, but we don't have too many resources, unfortunately. <laughs> but that's that's the best I got for that one. Thank you again. It has been fantastic to have you here. Uh, that's here. all the time we have for this hour. So thank you, Bobby. And thank you guys for watching.